Hello guys, welcome back to another banging video. Today we are looking again at Lost in the Pond, but this time we are looking at five ways British and American bedrooms are very different. So this could be an interesting one. I know British and American like have different styles of buildings, like decorations, you know, the way they do things. It's very different. Let's see what this video has for us. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe. Also join my Discord group so we grow our community together. The link will be down below. Let's get on with the video. Most common bedroom differences I get asked about is why do Americans sleep with that extra sheet between the quilt and you? Extra sheet? Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to bedrooms. In Britain and throughout the world, people need a designated room where they can go to sleep and do other stuff, like reading, for example. But depending on the country that you're in, the bedroom, a word supposedly coined by Shakespeare, might take a different form. And as somebody who has lived extensively in both Britain and America, this is most certainly true of those two countries. And so without further ado, here are five ways that British and American bedrooms are very different. Before we even get to the centerpiece of the bedroom, which is the bed, there is one major thing that American bedrooms have that most British bedrooms do not. And it's something contained not within the four walls of the bedroom, but within the wall. I'm talking about built-in closets. Now, this is my walk-in closet. I say mine, I mean, it is shared with my wife, of course. I say shared, I mean, it's, it's mostly hers. <laughs> So you might be thinking, well, Lawrence, where do British people hang their clothes? And the answer is simple, in a wardrobe that admittedly takes up more space, unless it leads to Narnia. But while America may have the advantage in the closet department, Britain is still leading the way on these. Back in the days when I still dressed like a child, you bought me this t-shirt, so you can leave it out. Back in the days when I was still a child, I distinctly remember sleeping alongside a rubber accessory that was filled with hot water. I, I hot used this when I was a child. And it was one of those things that I'd forgotten about until researching for this video. For anyone not in the know, a hot water bottle is exactly the accessory I just described, and its purpose is to keep you warm while you sleep. Yep. It can be a problem if you accidentally burst it, because then your parents think you have another problem and you have to go see a doctor. Now, with the advent of electric blankets, hot water bottles have seen a decline in popularity. This is particularly true in the United States, but I have it on good authority that people still occasionally use them in Britain. But part of me believes that most of them just use it to refill their tea without leaving the bed. As always, when it comes to comparing British and American things, inevitably it always comes back to size. And you might not be too surprised to learn that American beds, on the whole, are longer, wider, or sometimes both, than British beds. So let's take a look at how that plays out, or lays out. That's a bed pun. Sorry, let's just take a look. So the smallest bed size in the United States is the twin bed. This measures in at roughly 39 by 75 inches. And its nearest equivalent in Britain is a single bed, which is just as long as an American twin, but four inches less wide. After that, America has a twin XL, which is coupled with Britain's small double. Try saying that after four whiskeys. And then America has what is known as the full-size mattress. This is 54 inches by 75. This is almost identical to the double-size mattress in yep. Britain. From here on out, things become like a game of chess, as both countries sort of introduce a royal family of mattress sizes. In the US, some people sleep on the queen, not the queen, that would be breaking news, on a queen-sized mattress, which is about 60 inches by 80. This is virtually identical to Britain's king-sized mattress, but neither country ousts their bedroom monarchy there. What's better than a queen? A super queen. In the US, this measures in at 66 inches by 80. Funnily enough, the nearest equivalent in Britain is called, can you guess what it's called, Kanya? Kanya is called a super king, and it's 72 inches by 80. Oh, is so that what they actually Britain, call it? Except them? it doesn't, because America also has a king-sized bed that measures 76 by 80. And at this point, Britain's mattresses abdicated the throne, while America's just kept going with the California king at 72 inches by 84, and that's just showing off. So perhaps this additional size is why Americans are more likely to use one of these. 
books. However massive the mattress, it's more common in the US than the UK for it to sit on top of what is known as a box spring. And while I definitely couldn't claim to be a bed connoisseur, I hadn't heard of the phrase box spring until I moved to America. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, we don't call it that. Apparently, we call it either a sprung bed base or a divan. I've never used those terms either, and that's because this particular contraption is much less common in Britain. And so what is this contraption? Well, a box spring is a base that sits under your mattress that sort of incorporates a spring system like you might find in your mattress. And the idea is with that we get balance, it. I won't keep doing that, the springs in the mattress have a greater shelf life. In Britain, our mattresses tend to sit on harder surfaces, meaning that the springs in your mattress wear down more quickly depending on how much you put them under duress. Mine were mostly fine. But so much for what goes under the mattress. Let's take a look at what goes on top. One of the most common bedroom differences I get asked about is, why do Americans sleep with that extra sheet? between the quilt and you. And this is what's known as a top sheet. And while I have read that top sheets have become less popular among younger Americans, they are nonetheless still in wide use. But what purpose do they serve? Well, aside from adding an additional layer of warmth for Americans that don't know the joys of a hot water bottle, a top sheet is often used for hygienic reasons. The theory being that your body, and therefore body odour and sweat and dirt, doesn't come into contact with the comforter slash quilt. And I can get behind this idea because it means you can wash the comforter less often. Who needs bulky laundry? Now, because Americans are more likely to use this approach than British people, they're also more likely to not use a duvet cover because What's the point? In Britain, this is largely how we get around the hygiene problem, if indeed we choose to. Now, if Reddit is anything to go by, then this is the source of a heated debate. So let me know in the comments below, top sheet or no top sheet. As for me and my other wife, we compromised on both a top sheet. Let me know as well in the comments, do you use a top sheet? That's it for this let episode. Me know. Let me know in the comments below how you keep your Well, that was it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching with me. We'll probably see you on the next video. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget, like, subscribe. It really helps your bro out. That's it for today. Peace out.